Hi everyone, I'm Samira Abdi and you're watching the MF Corner. With me, I have Kalpesh Asher, Full Circle Financial Planners and Advisors. Kalpesh, good afternoon. Thanks much Thanks. for braving the rains in Mumbai. No problem. And actually getting here on time. No problem. Everyone. So I hope you're going to have a lot of fun, guys. Uh, this week, Kalpesh, you want to actually dig into your experience a little bit to find out where exactly people are going wrong when they start investing. So for all the years that you've been advising people, uh, what do you think is the biggest stumbling block that retail investors face? So I think it's all in the mind. Like yeah. in everything in life, it's all in the mind. And uh, people, when they invest in mutual funds, now it's, it's I think, in the positive side that people have started understanding what mutual funds are and we are seeing the res results of yeah. that in the you know, large contributions which are coming, but this has taken some doing. Yeah. But yet we find that because it's a it's a pretty, you know, new type of a concept mm. which is being, uh, coming into the people's mindset, there are lots of mistakes which retail yeah. investors make and we do not want that to happen. Mm. When the industry is flourishing, we don't want people to go disheartened out of this particular thing. So there are certain things which I feel they should clear that myth and they won't suffer. Mm. So the first one which comes into my mind is that there's always been an element of dividend payout in mutual funds. Yeah. And that has been the hanging... Seen as an income. Income, exactly. <laughs> and that has been the hanging carrot yeah. which people have fallen into. Yeah. And I think that needs to be cleared here that when you are investing in mutual funds, it's unlike what you invest in a bank FD or a, a share or something like that. The returns on which are actually the fruit is in the growth not in the actual income which is imparted yeah. to you because in a mutual fund whenever there is a dividend payout which has been declared the corresponding NAV has fallen to that much percentage yeah. and the normal investor the new investor is not aware of this hmm. and now to add I think uh, spice to the whole thing uh, on a negative side of course is that the imposition of the 10% dividend distribution yeah. tax on the dividend so that makes it pretty pretty bad scenario that people who want dividends are really not gaining much out yeah. of it and I have also seen like uh, you asked that what's the experience that people have seen that in a bad phase of a market mm. the dividends have been coming but the NAVs because the dividend has been paid out has been falling yeah. to a certain extent where the principal okay. also has gone out oh, okay. and that is not attuned to the mindset of yeah. the normal investor so we do not want that to happen so please clear this myth that when you invest in mutual funds, it's got to be in the growth mode. There are better avenues in mutual funds to derive your income. And the most important one and the best one there is the SWP, the Systematic Withdrawal Plan. Yeah, that's true actually, you know, Kalpesh, because I know a lot of people who have told me that NFO is actually cheaper uh, than the mutual funds which are already existing because the NAV is less. That's so, another myth. Yeah, that's another myth, right? But exactly. it takes off from this that yeah. the people are unable to understand what exactly, exactly is the NAV is. and yeah. how it gets calculated post a lot of these uh, actions like say in this instance a dividend payout but speaking of um, uh, you know uh, you spoke about the growth uh, option in the mutual True, funds yeah. right uh, so people have started their SIPs in fact a lot more people have gotten into this SIP mode uh, but they do it for like say one year two year three year period and not really benefit from this whole magic of compounding so so that uh, practically stems from you know the, the profession in which we are yeah. it's financial planning so when you know your cash flows, that you know that you're going to do an SIP for a long term, mm. you set aside that money from your monthly mm. cash flow, which you are seriously not going to need. Yeah. So once you have that decided in your mind, you're never going to look at that, that I want to stop my SIP. And what people have done is that because they have their you know, goals uh, not in sync with their lifestyle, they have not checked with their cash flows. They always look at that, that okay, I need to attend this goal. Now I need to stop this SIP and that's the big cardinal mistake which people have been doing and thus affecting the power of compounding. So we've always seen the power of compounding works like magic, magic yeah. and you so have to... Uh, what, eighth, ninth wonder of the world? Yeah, so that's a cliche <laughs> saying but yeah. it is a fact, you can't run away from that yeah. fact and like they say the proof of the pudding is in eating it. So people who've been in it through various market cycles are reaping the benefits of actually systematic investments. Mm. That's true actually and there are any number of examples out there which can prove to you exactly how well compounding may actually work in your favor. I think if you were to even delay your investments by say five years, 
um, in terms of returns over say a 20, 30 year period, it could be even be as huge as what, like one crore, two crore plus? Huge, huge. Yeah. And that's where the mantra, if you say, comes of start early. Yeah, start early. So, <laughs> so we always keep saying that how much ever you find it's a bang on your head, but you need to start early yeah. because there's no substitute for time. And if you have time on your hand, the amount of wealth you can amass with your limited resources is enormous. Yeah, so start early and start small. That's better than starting late but starting big. big. All right. The other big thing that uh, uh, I notice a lot of people actually waver is wh when they see these cycles in the market, right? So if the market is going up, of course, everything is great and, you know, everyone's your friend. But when the market is going down, it suddenly becomes evil. Evil, exactly. Right? So what do retail investors do and what they shouldn't be doing? So here, uh, there's one more uh, pillar of financial planning, which you go is drawing up your financial goals. Yeah. So if you know that you have a certain goal in mind for which you've projected for the next 15 years, and unfortunately you're caught at the wrong end of the cycle in the first two years of your investment and your SIPs are suffering, I think your goal should be brought into prominence there, saying that I've got 13 years to go and why is this market cycle bothering me? I should not look at stopping my SIPs. In fact, that is the best period. In fact, your SIPs will do the magic for you because they are buying more units at a lower NAV. And in case, even if you are uh, you know, uh, quite good with your uh, finances at that point of time, there's no harm in putting in yeah. some more money at that point of time when the exactly. markets are really low. But that all attributes to your financial goal because if your mindset is crystal clear, you will not think of stopping your SIPs come what may. Yeah, it's like going for a sale, right? And you have to be prepared when you with, go for yeah. one of these big summer sales exactly. or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just yeah. setting yeah, it. Exactly. Okay, the other uh, problem Kalpesh happens is, uh, and in this regard, I must say that the mutual fund industry has actually taken a lot of steps and they have really gone out to say that, you know, past performance is not an indicator of future returns and yet we see people are obsessed with, you know, the three-year returns, five-year returns, exactly. one-year returns, I mean, you name it, whichever way they can stack it up. I think uh, that also is a little bit of a fault of the way mutual funds have been projected yeah. for increasing the sales and that's a true fact we can't run away from that because people want to participate in it and they want to see who been the heroes. Right. Now those heroes necessarily are heroes for a certain period but not legends. Yeah. And what we want to invest in is legendary funds, good funds, funds with a good pedigree. There are many parameters which you would like to invest. Yeah. Looking at the whole thing, you need to see the fund manager, you need to see the actual turnover ratio of the fund, you need to see the expense ratio. So not necessarily that what you see with a five star rating for the last one year or two years is the right way to look at it. And there's one more part to it, Sumera, is that these funds people do not understand at a basic level. These are the funds which are the high risk funds. Mm. So these are precisely right. your mid caps and small caps which have performed during a bull, bullish phase of the market mm. but need not be mistaken for that they will be the evergreen funds ever performing. So what you need is a total balance in your portfolio, a good study before you venture out and then keep focusing it and investing for the long term. Okay and let's finally come to what's number five on Kalpesh's list. Uh, incidentally, these were his top five uh, myths. The last one, of course, deals with bond funds. Now, I know a lot of people try and play the equity cycle. You'll be surprised to know that a lot of people are now attempting to also play the interest rate cycle. And, exactly. uh, you know, one thing that experts go on saying over and over again is that you invest in bond funds because they offer safety to your portfolio and not because they give you returns. Am I right? Absolutely spot on. Because what I perceive it is that the debt fund part of the mutual fund industry is for the fixed income part, although there is a level of risk in everything what we analyze. So the people investing in debt mutual funds, and you'll be surprised to know the large amount of corpus which is in the mutual fund industry is by the corporates and institutions, mm -hmm. which have parked their money for yeah. safety only. Exactly. They have not run after or thrived for higher returns when they parked their money there. Uh, just a small analogy, you know, just to, just to classify the, the risk and the return part of it, is that, you know, if, if you have a swimming pool, and when you want to start entering the swimming pool, you always have the shallow part of the swimming pool first where you can at least touch your feet and feel the water, whether it is warm or cold or something, and then take strides and move toward the deeper end of the mm. swimming pool. So here, the shallow part is the debt fund. Mm. 
where you are rooted to the ground yet you're feeling the the markets you're not supposed to take a risk there and do hanky panky things there <laughs> if you want to do that you can take a very concentrated call and venture out into the deep which is the on the analogy part the equity part of it yeah. so balance yourself do not invest in dynamic bond funds or the guilt funds or something because many of the times and uh, forgive me if i'm saying this but even the fund managers have gone wrong on calling yeah. the right interest rate cycle yeah. Uh, calls which they have been taking. So, as retail investors, look at debt funds for a very moderate, tax-efficient returns than a savings account or a bank FD. Yeah. So, just like insurance provides protection, debt provides safety, and equity provides your uh, returns and the growth. Alpha. And the growth, exactly. Yeah. Okay, uh, so we have some queries coming in. Um, I'm not able to see the name of the person who has posted this query, but they basically want to know about this NFO that's just opened yesterday, which is the ICICI Pro PhD, right? Okay. That's Pharma Healthcare Diagnostics. Um, now, Pharma as a space has been doing phenomenally mm. well the last one, two months. That aside, um, a thematic fund, um, you know, almost a sectoral fund, you can call it, it is, that. It is, absolutely. Uh, what would your call be? So I would still stick to one particular uh, fundamental that sectoral funds or thematic funds launched by whichever AMC are always prone to a high risk type of an element in your portfolio. Yeah. Now, like what you rightly said, pharma sector has only been in the limelight since the past couple of weeks or three, four yeah. weeks now. And uh, uh, it could be to the credit of the AMC that they've done their due diligence and research and at a very apt time they've come out with this particular uh, NFO, the, the PhD uh, uh, fund. Now here I would like to sign, sound a word of caution for the investors that the pharma sector has got a lot of uh, you know global uh, factors moving around it. Yeah. And uh, we are always at the beck and call of the US what they would do to us and you know all those things. So be very careful. Uh, the fund pedigree is good, but they do not actually go in for a lot of sectoral funds. It's surprising they've come out with a sectoral fund yeah. after a, a quite a long time. So even if you wish to invest, not more than 5 to 10% of your portfolio. All right, that sounds good. And incidentally, it was Mahesh Patil who asked this question. So Mahesh, I hope this has worked out for you. Uh, Sakti Natesan wants to know whether or not they should continue with their Mirai Asset Equity India Fund. So they haven't given us their uh, uh, the kind of allocation they have to this, what place this has in their portfolio. Uh, but nevertheless, is this a fund you track? And what would you advise uh, me? No, I do not track that. But as a fund house, Mirai has, uh, I think, uh, really grown by leaps and bounds. And uh, their emerging blue chip fund in the mid cap space, uh, this uh, fund which you are mentioning also has now been started coming to uh, coming in the limelight now. So look at your asset allocation, and even if this is a pure equity fund, so it doesn't matter if I track it or whatever it is. If your time frame is for five to seven years, keep looking at it, but do not uh, take a call just for a couple of years. Okay, Vishal Sagar wants to know what you think of the HDFC hybrid fund and he wants to know if this is good for him to start an SIP with a 10-year time horizon. Okay, now this is from the family of the, the, the recategorization of schemes which has uh, taken place and uh, a lot of changes have happened and this is one of the prime, uh, I think, examples of that particular one. So HDFC uh, hybrid fund which you mentioned yeah. uh, has now uh, been now renamed. It was earlier the... HDFC balanced fund and that was a super performer in that particular category but it has also got the premium multi cap now included, included in, in, in yeah. that particular one so I really don't know that uh, the younger brother when it joins the bigger brother how will the the new camaraderie perform but uh, as an hybrid fund I don't think many of the fundamentals would have changed so uh, looking at this uh, hybrid uh, fund which you are uh, tracking of HDFC balanced now called HDFC hybrid I think for a 10 year uh, time frame, I recommend it. Okay, so Vishal, uh, that's uh, the advice for you, recommended. Gagandeep Singh wants to take this forward. Uh, since we are talking, uh, speaking about uh, balanced funds, hybrid funds, etc., he wants to know where he can put uh, 1 lakh rupees for the next two years. Now, Gagan, I'm hoping that you have a very good reason for choosing a time horizon of two years. And if that is the case, Kalpesh, it becomes a little bit difficult because he wants to look at balanced funds, but he has only a two-year uh, horizon. No, so uh, sorry to disappoint you, Gagan, but the answer is no equity fund recommendations if your time frame is not more than three to four years. Because it's, it's quite dangerous looking at the, the situations which you are in 
and uh, even a two year time frame, my suggestion would be you might as well look at a short term or a, a liquid fund type of a uh, you know debt fund category rather than even going in for the balanced fund categories. Yeah. And on the scheme uh, categorization, uh, Samir, I'd like to say is that uh, this is just very recent development in the month of June, which all fund houses are yeah. now adjusting their portfolios. So it's not out even in the public yeah. domain as to what's, yeah, there's what, what's going yeah. to be the actual fact sheets yeah. which they're going to come out with. So to give a recommendation would not be fair at this yeah. point of that time on balanced funds. Yeah. Okay, uh, for now then, uh, we have just a couple of last queries. Uh, Vinod Sundaravadnam uh, wants you to review his portfolio. He has SIPs in uh, ICICI, LTEF tax saving growth fund, Axis long term equity fund and DSP BlackRock focus fund. Yeah, so uh, the ICICI, I think you've got uh, two of them which are in the ELSS category. Mm. Uh, so the ICICI long term equity fund is a good fund. And uh, uh, we had an earlier question about, uh, you know, the PhD fund which yeah. uh, ICICI has launched. So ICICI has got this long term equity fund, though not in healthcare. They have taken a bit of calls of that fund in a little bit of value based investing uh, type of uh, uh, concept. So here, the long-term equity fund is good. The second one, which you said, the Focus 25 fund, that also is good. So I think your SIPs are fine. But the, the third ELSS, or the second ELSS fund, which you've uh, suggested, I don't see a place for two ELSS funds in a particular portfolio. One, one tax saver fund is good enough for you. So you can probably uh, shift the in, uh, amount to the ICICI long-term equity fund and make do with that and instead get a good uh, multi-cap fund in your portfolio. All right, uh, guys, so we're about to wrap up. We have time for just one more question, and I'll take that uh, from Shivang Bhatt because it's a first-time investor, and our endeavor has always been to try and encourage new investors, and especially first-time investors. So Shivang wants to know that um, uh, at the current levels, should he be looking at investing in the large-cap space, the multi-cap, or the mid-cap? Uh, he only wants recommendation on any one fund. Okay, so uh, surely if you have this uh, universe just between the three of them, then the obvious choice is going for a large cap fund. And that too, if it's a larger amount which you have, the suggestion would be park your money in a debt fund and do an STP from there. Yeah. So do a systematic transfer plan, defer it for the next six months. And the fund which I recommend here is the ICICI Prudential Blue Chip Equity Fund. All right, so that makes sense, guys. I hope your questions have been answered. I know we have a lot more queries coming in, but we're out of time. So catch us on Thursday at 1 p.m. Manoj Nagpal will be with us, and he'll answer all the questions that we couldn't today. Thanks very much for watching. Kalpesh, thanks very Thank much you. for joining Thank in you. and for advising all of our viewers. We'll see you again on Thursday. Bye-bye.